Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about wildfires, flash flooding, and downburst winds, as well as the overall outlook for the next seven days. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. First of all, let's start off with the overall uh, last 30-day precipitation map from June 18th to July 18th. The graph here is on the on the right hand side, but man, look at this! All the purple shaded areas that is upwards to over 20 inches of rainfall. It's been very wet along the uh, Gulf Coast states into Florida, along the Ohio Valley, and getting to parts of the Northeast as well. In fact, some of these areas in the Northeast has already seen their wettest July ever on record, and so it's been. Pretty dry out here in the predominantly the West Coast in the Northwest where they've been seeing those wildfires. And they've been getting some pockets of rain in the midsection of the country. And just as of late, the monsoon is starting to get really active in uh, parts of uh, Arizona as well as uh, New Mexico. And that will continue to remain active. But the temperatures as well have been well below average for a good chunk of the country. You can definitely see this is a chart from July 1st to July 17th. Uh, some of these areas like Dallas, this you're talking your second coolest start to July in 40 years. I mean, this has been an, an inceptionally cooler start where all the rain has fallen. That's predominantly where the lower temperatures have been and where the under the ridge of high pressure out here in the west and the northwest. That's been where they see in some of those record high temperatures and well above average temperatures uh, for for that area. But let's go into the Atlantic as well as the Caribbean and find out what's happening out there. It's been predominantly quiet in the Atlantic for the last week or two, a lot partly because this Saharan dust, and that's indicative of this yellow shaded area. That is some drier air, and the green is showing that the, that's your little bit more uh, moist atmosphere, a little bit more unsettled atmosphere. That's where you can actually rain under that particular environment, but you can definitely see there's not much happening. There's subtle hints of a little tropical wave out here in the Bahamas. That's gonna start scooting off into the Gulf here. But overall, it's been fairly quiet, but it's been really active off, off of Africa where you, they get this uh, monsoon trough. And you can see the drier air pushing them down to the south and keeping this well down to the south. You've got a lot of instability by Panama as well as into uh, Costa Rica with this green shaded area. That actually is going to cross over into the Pacific side, and that's actually going to add, you know, more precipitation to the monsoon as we go forward deeper into the week. Now let's flip to the Atlantic side and show you the overall big picture of what's happening. There is a cold front up here in the U.S. that's sinking southward uh, this morning. It's actually crossing uh, North Texas. Uh, as we speak, and along that cold front, that's where you're going to find that unstable air and some of those uh, rain showers. And this uh, this white, that's depicted of some lightning that's picking up in the atmosphere this morning. You can see it's definitely predominantly pretty dry out here in the Atlantic. The monsoon trough continues to remain active, and this remains active almost like a conveyor belt. This is uh, Felicia that's finally uh, down, you know, kind of falling apart as we speak. This is uh, Guillermo, but this little feature down here, these are pulling in this uh, monsoon trough, and you can actually see almost like this conveyor belt of uh, precipitation based on these uh, this active Pacific uh, time frame right now. And as this moves across to the west, we have another one that's actually going to be moving up that's going to be adding to this uh, active monsoon conveyor belt as we go uh, through the week and we also have another feature down here a little short wave that's gonna be crossing in from Canada that's gonna be impacting uh, parts of uh, Minnesota getting into Wisconsin and Michigan uh, later on today but let's go to the North American view on the flip side of it and show you the really big picture of what's happening uh, this is the North American view the blue is depicted of your what they call the trough that's more or less the unsettled weather cooler weather where the red is that is your ridge of high pressure the darker the red uh, typically the do more dominating the ridge of high pressure it is and underneath there's that sign of the cold front and that's where the unsettled weather is going to be down here in the u.s uh today and actually much of next week but up to the north i mean look at alaska it's all red in fact they uh anchorage alaska hit 80 
degrees yesterday. It was only the 37th time they've hit 80 and the, since 1970. And in fact, they've had three days in a row of record high temperatures. So it's been really warm in Alaska. We're under that ridge of high pressure into Canada and much of the northern, uh, northern interior. And that ridge of high pressure is slowly shifting. Look at this really colder air that's building in the Arctic Circle. That's some pretty cold air for July standards. But this ridge is essentially going to be love shifting just a tad bit further off to the central U.S., park itself over the Dakotas, and then eventually slide southward as we creep towards uh, the end of the week into the weekend and, and, and predominantly going to be over the central plains, drying them out and heating them up as we go into the weekend. So let's take you through Monday. There's the cold front. So if you are with me, the last uh, couple days, it had this cold front moving through. The change in the pattern was this cold front, the timing, it's all about timing. So this cold front's actually moving through North Texas right now. So it's moving through the morning hours and it's not the less unstable hours of the day. So that puts less rainfall into North Texas. And as this shifts southward, as we go throughout the day, tapping into the, some of that Gulf moisture, tapping in some of those higher temperatures that puts the heavier rain to the southeast side of the dallas warworth area now they're looking at some of the heavier rains going to be setting up as we go into the afternoon hours into uh, east texas and and to the south of that boundary that's where you're going to be picking up uh, the heavier rains in parts of uh, alabama and along the coast here uh, but to the north of there it's pretty dry going to be under that ridge of a uh, high pressure and we've got a critical fire danger happening today and uh, Montana with this active uh, monsoon trough at ahead of it with this uh, in, in the Four Corners region. So yes, there's your heavier rain prospects today. The slight risk of, of uh, heavier rain has uh, shifted further off into uh, East Texas, taking advantage of that daytime heating, setting up over uh, Alabama, setting up over the East Coast here, over the Carolinas, and then a marginal risk for excessive rainfall with that monsoon that's going to be continuing to remain active. And there's your fire danger today. No question. I mean, it's been dangerously hot and the fires are just relentless out here. The big one is the bootleg fire. Unfortunately, that is almost 300,000 acres. That's essentially the size of Los Angeles. That is only 25% contained. I mean, it is just devastating of what's happening out there. And it's going to be a critical day again for much of the of the Northwest. And especially as we get into Montana uh, with the uh, really high fire danger and five of them started yesterday and just within a matter of 30 minutes. I mean, they pop up with these higher winds. And as uh, we get into the heat of the afternoon, you have what they call dry lightning and that sparks the atmosphere as well. So it's just a dangerous setup. But going into Tuesday, man, look at that cold front. How often can we talk about on July 20th, a cold front making it in to Houston, Texas? <laughs> that's what's happening and that's what's on the table. And along that cold front, that's where the inst instability is going to lie. And a lot of that uh, cooler cooler weather and more unsettled weather and the little heavier rainfall is going to take, take place as well, right to the south side of that boundary so you can see they have a marginal risk for excessive rainfall all the way down to the rio grande valley all the way down into houston southern louisiana getting into the southeast and parts of uh, the carolina states where we have that trough that's that would move through that i showed you today that's going to be setting up over the northeast by the time we uh, get into tuesday with some heavier rains in upstate new york where they've been seeing the heavier rains as of late and then again, the four corners of the monsoon continues to remain active for them. And then as the ridge slowly shifts, that puts the fire danger a little bit higher over uh, uh, Idaho, getting into uh, Montana as we go through the day on a Tuesday with that excessive uh, you know, heat, heat warnings and high fire danger. There's the cold front as we go into Wednesday. It'll actually stall and tend to sort of back up, which is indicative of this blue the blue is all blue is that's cold once it starts turning you know red and gr red and blue that's indicative of a warm front that it's moving to the north not to the south so that's going to be putting the heavier rain again along this boundary and it's just going to be south enough in dallas and in fort worth that you're going to miss out 
on a lot of the heavier rain as it'll be pushing more south of you, setting up over uh, more or less central Texas, Austin, San Antonio, Houston, and that'll creep into, again, as this backs up, a lot of the same areas into the southeast with those uh, heavier rains as we have a new boundary setting up again for uh, the Ohio Valley in the northeast with some more rains moving into that region. And again, they have a marginal risk for excessive rainfall. Again, I showed you, you know, some of these areas have already picked up their wettest July on record, and they're just going to be adding to those totals as we go throughout the week along this boundary that just adds the, creates that instability still uh, where that cold front's going to be. And then the trough again is uh, with the monsoon continues to remain active. As we go into the day on Thursday, I stopped it here at zero Z, which is essentially seven o'clock at night on Thursday. There's the setup. There's the boundary. We have a lot of the instability off to the East Texas, Southeast, Southeastern states into the Carolinas with the active uh, monsoon trough and it continues to remain predominantly dry for much of the Northwest into California. As we take a look at the overall uh, uh, anomalies for that Thursday, the subtle shift of the ridge continues to push more or less into the interior regions. As this ridge shifts, it brings in some cooler air into Alaska, but predominantly brings the, the bigger ridge over the central part of Canada and then over the Dakotas. That's where you're going to be finding your higher temperatures uh, for them. And this will slowly try to sag southward as we go through Friday and as we go into the weekend, eventually setting up over the plains with some triple digit heat starting to show up for them. But down to the south, that's you're gonna to continue to remain cooler with that with those boundaries in place for much of the Ohio Valley into the south, southern parts uh, of the US. And looking at the water vapor imagery as we go into the day on uh, that Friday, you can definitely see that, um, yeah, with that uh, instability that I showed you at the beginning of the video over Costa Rica, as well as uh, Panama, that will continue to shift northwest, and that will just adding adding to the monsoon flow as we go, and then actually picks up again as we go into the day on Friday with this conveyor belt of precipitation starting to feed in. This orange is that's depicted of your drier air. So as the ridge slowly shifts to the north and then sinks southward, your drier air will start to set up over the central plains, and then. Again, where that boundary is to the south side, that's where the instability is. And you're just kind of your scattered and isolated uh, daily showers and uh, thunderstorms. And yes, it, as we transition into Saturday, the, uh, Saturday zero, Sunday zero Z is basically seven o'clock on Saturday. That's again, the monsoon really doesn't get active until the later in the evening hours. We're talking after four o'clock. By the time we, but the time seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock rolls around, it's pretty active because you got a lot of the heat taking advantage of the, a lot of the instability throughout the day, and then once once that kind of turnover effect happens, that's where the air is going to be able to rise and create those towering thunderstorms and create uh, those uh, showers and thunderstorms and eventually potentially that flash flooding. And it doesn't take much in these areas to create that flash flooding. All it takes is a half inch to an inch in an hour time span and you got some dangerous flash flooding in this uh, neck of the woods and so that's the potential pretty much all week and especially as we get into the day friday saturday where it's going to be active again with that with that new system uh, coming on board as we go into the day on a sunday again it just continues to remain active the ridge more or less starts here this week goes into Canada, goes over the Dakotas, and eventually sinks southward as we go throughout the week. And again, into, by the time we get into Sunday, it's more or less going to be parked over Kansas and, and getting into parts of uh, Oklahoma, where you're going to be really starting to dry out in Texas, where you're probably going to be seeing some upper 90s by then into the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is basically about normal, where you should be uh, this time of year, because your average high goes to 97 by the by the time we get to the July 23rd time frame and it stays that way all the way through August 14th so yeah you're going into the next three weeks predominantly your hottest this is the hottest time 
of summer. So, so this is, you know, on average, this is your hottest time for the next three weeks uh, going forward until the middle of August for a good chunk of the country. It is, it is your hottest uh, time frame. So this is what you would normally see for your hottest temperature. So when you're talking cool fronts and, and unsettled weather, that is definitely below average. But we're going to return to a little bit at more average temperatures for Texas standards as we go into uh, next weekend. So there's the rainfall prospects for the next week through the 26th of the month. You can definitely see where that instability would lie with that boundary for a good chunk of the week. You're going to be well you know, below average for a good chunk of Texas in the southeast. So with those with that instability and all the rain showers, that's going to put the heavier precipitation down there for them. There's the trough troughing setup over the monsoon with the four corners region starting to creep into the parts of California and starting to filter in into uh, parts of Idaho and Montana. But a lot of this won't be reaching the ground, unfortunately, with that dry lightning. You can almost see where the hole is. That's where the ridge is. So it starts here, then dives down. So where that where that sinking air is, it's not going to be able to rain in that area under that ridge of high pressure. Uh, so it, it, it continues to remain active for the next uh, week. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.